morning. morning. After worship, during coffee hour, we'll be discussing the building of the ark. So um, stay tuned for that. Um, This is the seventh Sunday after Pentecost, and welcome to all who are here who brave this weather to come and worship with us. Um, If you are able, in body or in spirit, to stand, I invite you to stand as we confess our sins and acknowledge God's forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Calm the gift of God, claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith, hope, and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Today's readings are for the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. The first reading is a reading from the 55th chapter of Isaiah. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Today's responsive reading is Psalm 65. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vows be fulfilled. Our sins are stronger than we are but you blot out our transgressions. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and the oceans far away. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the waves, and the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You make the dawn and dust sing for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. The second reading is from the eighth chapter of Romans. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, 
The spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell upon the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. For what was sown on rocky ground This is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears and yields fruit, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This time I would invite the youngsters to come forward for a message sermon on the steps. Got a couple? No? Okay, well then you won't, maybe you won't get to see what's in here. Hey, come on up. Okay. All right, I'm going to sit down, which is always dangerous. Okay. Did you hear in the gospel at the end, there were two sections of the gospel. At the end of the first section, they said, anyone with ears should listen, right? Do you have ears? Let me see. Do you have ears? Do you have two? One on each side? Okay. I brought some ears. I brought some ears. I'm going to let you hold some of these ears. Here's one ear. (laughs) You want to hold that one? Okay. Here's another ear. Uh, One for you. Okay. And then I brought something that most, some of you know what I'm talking about when I show these, but a lot of you will not know what these are. You won't know what they are, I don't think. What do you think these are? (laughs) What do you think these are? What are these called? Rabbit ears. Okay, these are rabbit ears. They don't look like a rabbit, do they? Okay, so these are corn, ears of corn, and ears of rabbits, rabbit ears. Do you think they can hear? Can the corn hear? No, no, corn can't hear. So, and, but the rabbit ears, they can kind of hear. They, um, my grandmother and grandfather 
had um, these on the top of their TV. How many of you had these on your TVs? Okay, I had it on my TV, my very first little black and white TV I had in my bedroom had these. And when um, the signal would come, and sometimes it wouldn't be good, and what would you do? <laughs> try to pick up the signal, right? Wherever it would be, you would go around and try to pick up the signal. And if you got it just right, you could actually see and hear the TV, right? Well, that's what um, these, so these ears can hear. Those ears cannot hear. These ears can hear. So what if I took these ears, okay, what if I took these ears and I put them like this? Would it help me hear? No? Wouldn't help me hear at all, would it? As a matter of fact, I can't hear as well. Would that, okay, so probably wouldn't, I don't want to get them too dirty because I'm going to eat them for dinner. But um, so those, those, those can't hear. But what if I took these ears, these ears, and I put them on top of my head? Do you think that would help me hear? No. No? Well, rabbit ears help the TV, help the TV signal to hear. So I guess partly this is the same thing as the Word of God. We use this. How do, how do we hear the Word of God? How do we hear it? Through the corn? No. Through the Bible? Through the Bible? Through coming to worship? Through singing songs and praying prayers? Okay, so there's a lot of ways that we can hear. We who have ears can listen. And there are some people who have ears of corn, and they can't hear anything. Some people have ears like rabbit ears, and they can hear sometimes. Some people have one ear of corn in one ear and a rabbit ear in the other. And that's what they were talking about. That's what Jesus was talking about in the second half of that gospel. So sometimes people hear the word, or hear the word, but the corn gets in the way, and they don't really understand it. So at night, when you say your prayers, or in the morning, whenever you say your prayers, um, after you give thanks to God for everything that you've, you've been given, I want you to add a little prayer, and I'm going to ask you to do it too. So we're going to say, listen, God. I am hearing you. What should I do? I hear you, God. Speak to me, that I may live your word. Okay. So if you got the right kind of ears, you can hear. Ears of corn don't do any good. Rabbit ears, they kind of help. The Bible helps. The stories in the Bible help. Prayers help and coming to worship help. Okay? So have a good day. Stay dry, if that's even possible. All right, what I do with them? Ah. I should have them stapled to my face. So this morning, our gospel kind of took a little turn. Did you notice? We're no longer hearing a litany of rules and instructions for discipleship. Gone are those warnings about how difficult it's going to be to follow Jesus. Even the promise to give rest to the weary and to carry our heavy burdens is missing. In our gospel this morning, Matthew has Jesus shifting gears. Well, we're nearly halfway through Matthew's Gospel. We'll be reading it through the rest of the church year. And for the next almost 15 chapters, Jesus will speak to his disciples, to the gathered crowds, and to us through a whole lot of parables, snippets, stories, scenarios that the listener was expected to hear with their ears, their real ears, and then ponder what they might mean. Jesus often uses parables to challenge his, challenge his listeners to think in unconventional ways. He uses these riddles, these parables, to illustrate how those listening might use those letters that are embedded within, to use those, those lessons to bring them closer to living in the kingdom of God. 
to invite them into ways of thinking about the kingdom of God, ways that were beyond their familiar and comfortable perspectives. So when we read these parables in our Sunday lessons, they can do the very same thing for us. This morning, Matthew's gospel tells us the parable of the sower and the seed. It's pretty familiar to, to most of us. It's a scenario that most of us can relate to, even for those of us who don't farm for a living. Because once spring has sprung, most of us still flock to our local nurseries and garden centers, buying up fertilizer and mulch, shovels and seeds and seedlings, and we get to work in that fragrant, musty, ripe to grow soil. Also, although it's true, that most of us don't grow corn or wheat or soybeans, many of us are still driven out to our gardens to urge the beauty, beautiful um, earth to growth once again and life once again. And we do it with flowers, with an occasional tomato plant, and of course the ubiquitous zucchini. This morning's gospel draws us to the memory of farming and farmers, and planting, and sowing. Now, I, for one, have no real hands-on experience with farming. And even if I did, it wouldn't have anything in common with the type of farming that Matthew's Jesus is talking about. And yet, this parable, maybe much more so than any of the others, is pretty clear and easy to understand because after the first half of it, when Jesus tells the parable, he actually explains it, slam dunk. What more is there to say? Well, what more there is to say depends entirely on how much each of us struggles to understand the Word of God. How much each of us struggles to be fed and nurtured during our worship experiences. How much each of us is willing to struggle to come to terms, terms with what our Christianity means to us in the world today and every day. What more there is to say is to a large degree been eroded away by our well-meaning attempts to moralize and even trivialize the Bible and its stories and the parables. Our well-meaning attempts to kind of put God's word in an easy to understand and easier still to cope with box. When we read a passage from scripture, in human nature, I think, that we tend to look for a moral. You know, a, a nice, tidy message, a message that tells us what we should do or what we should not do, how we should act or how we should not act, and how we should try harder, how we should always strive to do better, all accompanied by just a tinge of guilt to move us toward those higher goals. And don't get me wrong, stories with morals are good things. They offer good advice, they teach us valuable lessons, and they point us in the right direction when we stray. But to reduce the word of God to such simple terms often misses the point entirely. Jesus himself suggests that people can have a hard time hearing that deeper message that he's trying to offer. Let all who have ears Listen, on the surface, today's gospel about the sower of the seeds seems to set us up for kind of a moralistic and even straightforward conclusion about what it means to be a good seed, growing in good soil. First, we hear about that poor seed that fell on the path where people stepped on it and trod on it, and then the birds ate them up. We can be pretty sure that Jesus does not want us to be like that. Then there are the seeds that fell on the rocky ground. They didn't get very far since there was no soil to nurture them. We sure don't want to be like them. And of course, there are the, the seeds that landed in the thorns. Well, it seems like they never had a chance. And we most assuredly do not want to be like them. Life can be so treacherous, can't it? It takes a major effort to be a good seed in good soil, bearing fruit a hundredfold. Some folks quit before they even get started. Well, where's the gospel 
in that. Well, the gospel, my friends, is kind of woven in, sewn in, if you will, in the message that Jesus is giving us about the nature of God. In these verses, Jesus is telling us who God is, how God interacts with us, and that we can count on God to be there with us and for us and supporting us, even when we are rebellious and faithless. After a difficult time, or when events in your life take an awkward turn, have you ever said, God must have a really good sense of humor? Have you ever said that? I know I have. Or how about this? Have you ever marveled when a disaster or a disastrous event turns out to be something for the greater good? Kind of a surprise, we call that a silver lining sometimes, but it happens. Have you ever been disappointed and even angry with God when you haven't gotten the answer to your prayers that you'd hoped for? I know I have, and I'm betting most of you have too. And yet in the long run, have you felt the hand of God in these complicated and thorny times and events? Who here today, and those of us who are watching on live stream that we're afraid of the rain maybe, hasn't experienced most of these emotions. I'm betting that you, like me, have run the gauntlet of most of them. Each and every week when we come to worship, the word of God is proclaimed just as seed is sown. Sometimes it simply does not take root in our hearts. The four categories identified in the allegory that Jesus puts forth for us in the second half of this gospel gives us an accurate enough description of why not all of us believe all of the time. Some reject the word outright. Some are caught up in worldly activities, and still others are lured away by wealth or greed or success. These explanations were true in Matthew's day, and they continue to be true today. In fact, if we're totally honest with ourselves, most of us would have to admit that each of these types of seeds have lived in our hearts one way or another, on one day or another. At different times in our lives, each of us has found ourselves on rocky soil, been choked by thorns and snatched up by birds. But, and I know this is true because you're here this morning, I know that we have experienced the good soil of faith and the assurance of God's word. Each of us has, has experienced the confidence of God's presence in our lives and the conviction and the power of God's word. If this parable from Matthew's gospel is to take root in our lives and bloom and grow, we need to ask ourselves some honest questions, questions that need to come directly out of our experience of living in God's world today. We cannot ask dishonest questions, that gets us nowhere. We can't ask them and then point to other people when we think about rocky ground. We need to look at this parable and acknowledge the prejudice that lives in ourselves. We need to see in our own heart the rocks and the thorns and the birds of racism, homophobia, xenophobia, sexism, despair, anti-Semitism, depression, fear, and hatred, and the list could certainly go on and on. These emotions of discrimination and intolerance and bigotry and injustice are rocky ground where the word of God, no matter how it's sown, cannot do well, cannot grow and yield anything but more hate. We need to let the goodness of God's word shine on us to enlighten the dark shadows of our own sinfulness, we need to pick the rocks from our own soil to increase the fertile areas in our hearts and minds because then and only then will, be, will we be ready whenever the sower comes. Jesus tells us that whoever has ears should listen. If we hear the parable with the ears of those gathered around Jesus the rabbi, we will hear astonishing things about the nature of God, the nature of God's kingdom. This parable speaks powerfully about our God, our God, who is honest and good and generous, and our God who does not count the cost of love. 
the sower sows without worrying about the yield, and the seed God sows is potent. The harvest is rich. Jesus tells us that God will continue scattering the word throughout the world and that we will continue to receive it. And sometimes, sometimes, thanks be to God, sometimes it will take root and grow within us. And that is the good news of God's gospel today and every day. Let anyone with ears listen. Now let us profess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed as it's found printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. <coughs> On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. <coughs> I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Guide your church, O God, to sow seeds of forgiveness and righteousness on good soil. Direct your people to proclaim your love in this congregation and throughout the world. Hear us, O God. Sustain your creation, O God by sending favorable weather, causing trees and fields to grow, protecting waterways from pollution, and instilling in all people the need to be good stewards. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Maintain peace among all people, O God, and raise up lawyers to work for justice in the courts, advocates to speak for the downtrodden, and politicians to work on behalf of the common good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heal those who are sick, O oh God, especially Lucas, Denise, Isabel, Gary, those with ongoing prayer needs, and those that we name before you now. Guide health care workers to care for those who suffer, scientists to conduct life-saving research, and counselors to care for victims of sexual abuse and exploitation. Hear us, O oh God. Answer the prayers of those gathered in worship, O God. Protect those who travel near and far, accompany visitors to this congregation, and nurture our faith. Hear us, O God. For what else do the people of God pray? Hear us, O God. Inspire us by the faithful departed, O God, examples of your embodied love, whose confidence in the resurrection guides us in living lives worthy of the gospel. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Also Let's take a moment now to offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace.
You are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the word, world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <clears throat> the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat and drink what is good.
we stand in body or spirit? The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. <coughs> generous God for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Congregation, please be seated. We're going to do a little change up here, a little change up here. Due to scheduling conflicts and illness, uh, Dan was not able to be with us to be sent on uh, from to be celebrated for his graduation from high school and now in another week or two he's going off to Westchester so I would invite Dan and his parents to come forward. And we'll get to the mission kits in a minute. A lot of sending this morning. So you're off to Westchester? When do you go? I leave the 19th. The 19th of? Of August. Oh, okay. So I was going to say, isn't that <laughs> coming up soon? So, well, we have enjoyed having you here, especially at the Contemporary. Um, you, we know you'll be back because your parents are staying. But we wish you the best uh, as you move forward on this new journey. And Trinity has a gift for you to take with you on your trip. And then as part of our prayer shawl ministry, Westchester's colors. So when you're studying, well, this is, since I know you'll be washing it all the time, these are the instructions for the yarn, how you wash it. So, okay, so, okay, well, that's okay. You don't want to set anything on fire. So while you're studying and you need some extra prayers, just know that, just know that um, the folks at Trinity will be with you in body and spirit. Okay. All right. So good luck, Dan. And now I would like to invite Lucian Milosak and Maisie Mitchell to come forward as they prepare to go on their mission trip. So you'll see these beautiful t-shirts that they have. Uh, that artwork was done by our own John Milosak. Um, you see that we used it on the top of our bulletin, on our bulletin. So um, the theme for this mission trip is let the ripple effect flow. So um, we know that as you go off to Camden, New York, um, your good deeds and your selflessness will have an impact on those that you serve. And so, friends in Christ, today we give thanks to God and seek God's blessings as we send Lucian Milosak and Maisie Mitchell to Camden, New York, to facilitate in the rehabilitation of homes. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe. You made the whole earth for your glory. All creation praises you. We lift our voices to join the songs of heaven and earth in thanksgiving for the many blessings you have given us. Renew us in the commitment to use our gifts in the service of others, and especially of those in need. Let us be your hands to feed the hungry, to shelter the homeless, to clothe the naked, to comfort the weary and outcast, to welcome the stranger, care for creation, and to be loving neighbors of all people. Bless Lucian and Maisie, who go out from here to labor in Camden, New York, Prosper the works of their hands. Bless those who receive them and the fruits of their labor. And may they who receive their blessings in return feel the blessings of our Lord. 
May the gifts they use and share be signs of your love to all people. To you, O God, be glory and honor through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, in your church, in the world, now and forever. God's blessings. Be safe. Do God's work in our name. Thank you. We leave on the when you leave Saturday. They're off on this coming Saturday, so keep them in your prayers as the week progresses. Thanks, guys, for coming forward. Gotta love those t-shirts, right? Thank you, John. Now we have just a few announcements. Um, first of all, sincere thanks and appreciation to David Flock for his lovely rendition on that very interesting instrument. I have to say I've never seen or heard one of those before. It's called the digital horn. Very interesting. Thank you so much for sharing your talents with us. There is a hymn sing planned on July 30th. We've gotten some uh, request forms, but we need a whole lot more. So um, take your hymnal home. You still have a week, so take, take a hymnal home. Look through it. See what you can find that um, you'd like to sing that we haven't sung in a long time or if we sing all the time and you just want to hear it again. So make a list uh, and then write it on a piece of paper. There is an insert in the, in the uh, newsletter, but we'll take them on a piece of paper too. So just, and just remember to bring the hymnal back. So um, that's, we're looking forward to that on the 30th. Um, there are sign-up sheets out on the round table in the narthex. The cluster picnic is coming up. We have a few signs signed up but um, we would like to have a better showing from Trinity. We are, if I say so myself, pat you on the back, we are one of the more active churches in our cluster, and it would be really nice if we could have a, a good show. Um, and if you're willing to bake um, and send those cards, the gift cards, all the more, um, all the more benefit to, to those in the area who need it. Um, also, VBS, we had our first uh, VBS last week, and we had, we had a good group there. I think it might have been around 20, maybe, 18, something like that. Um, lots of kids, lots of, lots of all age people. Um, and we had a lot of fun. We sang, we, we played a game, we had a wonderful dinner, a big ziti, and there is room for you. So please, um, if you wanna break up your week a little bit, take, a, take, the week, take the night off from cooking, just be sure and sign up so that we have enough food for everybody who comes. Um, what else? The Peach Festival, we're going to have an announcement for there in a minute. Uh, I think that's everything else, though, that we need. Anybody besides Denise have a message that they'd like to share? Then Denise wants to talk to us a little bit, fill us up, fill us in on what's happening with the Peach Festival. Good morning. Good morning. Um, the Peach Festival is now less than four weeks away, believe it or not. Um, and I first want to thank everybody who has signed up to volunteer and to donate food items that we need for the Peach Festival, um, but there's still more to do. So um, if you feel so inclined, please take a look at the uh, sign-up sheets on the table in the narthex. There's still plenty of um, ways that you can volunteer and donate. If you want to uh, give a monetary donation, there are envelopes on the table as well for that. Um, there's still, sorry, I have things written down, but there's still signs available, yard signs, if you want to take one and put it in your yard. Um, and starting today, we will have a pre-sale for tickets. So if you want to buy your tickets ahead of time and avoid the lines on um, the, the, the 12th, um, please uh, get your tickets. They will be here every Sunday now up until the Peach Festival so that you can buy them. If you have any questions, you can see myself, Barb Heise, or G. McLaughlin. And again, thank you so much for, your, for supporting this great event. It does take a village to make it successful. Last year was wonderful. And I can attest to the line because Alice and Bob and I were selling tickets and the line went across the street all the way over here to where the band was playing. So if you have some money this week, next week, buy your tickets in advance. It does save, your, does save you a little bit of time. If that's everything that we have uh, for this morning, then I invite you to stand in body or spirit for the benediction, and then we'll have the sending hymn. The God who crawl, calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you, 
now to the end of the age. Amen.